morning, Netty fans. Welcome to another episode of Centre Court. All thanks to Lapine Funerals, supporting women in sport for over 125 years. And as usual, each and every week, I'm joined by, joined by former Aussie Diamonds captain, Shani Layton. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having me. It's uh, good to be here. No live audience here today, Shani. Sorry oh, about that. <laughs> it was a big round 11 in Suncorp Super Netball. Let's take a look at the results. What was the standout game for you, Shan? My standout game was definitely Lightning versus the Swifts, a top of the table clash, and it was what we expected with the Swifts going in four up at three quarter time, but the Lightning just getting the edge over them again. The spirit that that team has is next level. Well, it's certainly all heating up as we head into the finals. We still have a couple of weeks to go, so let's take a look at some of the games. This one's our first one up. Vixen's taking on Fever. It was a great performance by Emily Mannix. She really had the wood over Janelle Fowler. She really did, and Janelle is Fever's main player this year, so if you can shut her out of the game, Vixens never looked like they were going to lose. Credit to the Fever for fighting back in that second half, but they just don't have the on-point passing drives and everything that the Vixens do. They're just such a strong side at the moment, and they've really shown that this year, whereas Fever just seemed to be falling away. And it was the Vixens' patience that really stood out to me. They took their time, didn't matter how long it took, they just yes. wanted to get the ball in safely. So Simone McInnes will be very happy with that. Let's take a look at the next game. You mentioned it before. Lightning took on the Swifts and ended up with a two-point win. It was a great performance by the Lightning, but the Swifts, considering Helen Housby was out with an injury just before the game, they did step up to the challenge. They absolutely did. And I was actually surprised in how close the Swifts stayed, but it just showed what a solid unit they are with Sophie Garbin coming in, really stepping up for them. Probably didn't have the legs and experience that a Helen Housby would have, but hopefully she'll be back and be able to bring that back into the Swift side. But the standout for me was uh, Cara Conan in being able to play that goal shooter role, run out and goal attack for a little bit as well. And she's just developed so much over this year. But as we can see here, Sophie Garbin, who really did step up for the Swifts. Yeah, she did. Playing out of position. We don't often see her at goal attack. No. So that's two games down. We've got two to go, all thanks to Lapine Funerals. Now let's take a look at the bruiser of a game, the topic oh of the week. The Giants took on the Firebirds in Canberra at the AIS and I don't know about you, Shani, but for me, they're just both teams really struggled to find any momentum. Bodies going everywhere, balls going everywhere. What was your take on it? Yeah, it was a really rough game. It was really, it was hard for the Firebirds. They looked like they were starting so strong until Gretel Tippett came off here because of this elbow to the nose. But it just wasn't a game that was up to Super Netball standard, to be honest with you. It was undisciplined. Um, as you can see there, Joe Hart and cracking it and bouncing the ball down. And <laughs> just not the kind of game that we want to see at this level. So, you know, Giants getting the win here, an unfortunate loss when they could have won the Firebirds. But, yeah, it wasn't wasn't a great game to watch. Oh, Firebirds still searching for that win. But I love seeing a layup by Romelda oh. Aitken. Usually we see that by Gretel what? Tippett. But look at the crowd. They were getting into it. Rosalie Jenke was getting into it. She was. And <laughs> now, yeah. there's one final game that we need to look at. And it ended in another draw. We've seen so many in Super Netball so far. But the Thunderbirds, the Thunderbirds ended up drawing with the Magpie. And it was a performance that really was owned by the goalkeepers. It was. And Jeeva Mentor and Shamira Sterling having phenomenal games. Great work there from Mentor and really keeping the Magpies in it. But for me, one of the main players was Ash Brazel here with the ball coming in at centre. She's just provided that outlet for the Magpies in that goal third when they don't have that shooter that they can just go to with Shimona Nelson still finding her feet at this level. But for the Magpies to be able to fight back for a draw was phenomenal. Um, but still a draw, not what the Magpies need coming into finals. No. Right, and man. as we can see on the ladder, they're fighting it out with the Giants for that fourth position. I believe they're the only two teams eligible to sneak into that top four, but Swiss, Lightning and Vixens could finish any which way, but they've definitely locked in a place in the finals. Now it's time to get to our agenda. Our agenda item, all thanks to Lapine Funerals, supporting women in sport for over 125 years. Shani Layton, what's on your agenda this week? So me, Bianca, we all saw how physical that Giants and uh, Firebirds game was, but I think that the umpires could have pulled them into line and the players are going to go out there, they're going to put their body on the line, but it's up to the umpires to be able to call the cautions, call the warnings and not let them get away with it. But it's not just the umpiring fault here. They need to have more time and effort to be able to put into them
time because they're working full time whilst they're umpiring and looking after these professional athletes. But a few things that we can look at here, Bianca, is a few of the plays. So this is what players get away with when umpires aren't looking. Sam Pullman has a right elbow here, right into Romelda. But if you see the umpire was on the other side, she's able to get away with that. So these umpires need to be in the right position. I can guarantee you that they would have gone back and reflected and reviewed this. So that is exactly what they do and they are professional in what they're doing. But as the umpire pulled around, Sam Pullman pulled her arms down. As you saw here, Jamie Lee Price pulling us or getting that contact, but she actually got called offside there and not contact, so she's going to keep doing it. Here, Kira Austin, completely offside, knew she was offside and didn't get the call. And so it's just the pressure that these umpires are under, having to watch so much out there on the court, which is so hard to see. So what are we going to do here? This needs to be addressed by Super Netball and Netball Australia around how are these umpires getting looked after? How are they getting reviewed? I know True. it's a huge topic, but they are working full-time as well as doing this job, and I believe that they need to get looked after a little bit better as well. Ooh, got to be careful what we wish for. Lucky you and I aren't playing anymore I because <laughs> we took advantage yeah. of the positioning where the umpire was. You certainly did. I know. You used to love a little wraparound, the anchor. Oh, did I love that when I knew the umpire was right behind me. Yeah. All right, all thanks to Lapine Funerals. Let's get to the next agenda item, and this one I'm going to take on because yeah, it's a happy it. story, mm. and it's when Michael Mwenda, so the Malawian goal shooter, who we know has been out for 12 months with an ACL reconstruction. She finally got to take the court again for the Vixens. The crowd loved it. The team loved it. There were tears. You were courtside. How I was it? Was. It was so emotional. I was courtside when she came on and I actually had tears in my eyes as well because it's just what this game is about. With Everyone gets around them and gets around why. We all know how hard an injury is to get back from <laughs> and I was. I was tearing up for it. Oh, and this is why we play a team sport. It's this spirit that you just love about it and when you team teammates have got your back no matter what's happening. I just thought it was really important to highlight some of the great things that are happening in Suncorp Super Netball at the moment and that was the one that stood out for me. Shani, I'm ready for you. I'm ready All for right. the analyzer. Let's go, Bianca. <laughs> It's my time to shine. So, yes, whilst there was some physical play on the court this weekend, I want to highlight some clean defenders. And the clean defender I'm going to highlight today is Carla Pretorius because she was a huge influence in the win with Lightning over the Swifts on the weekend. And what I love about her is her clean play. She's off the body. She's moving back and forward. So if you have a look here, we're going to pause the ball. Oh, sorry, pause the screen. She's come back for the ball, but you can see that space right here between Sam Wallace and herself. She's not getting contacted. So therefore, she keeps the ball in play and she's skillful enough to get that elevation up, like I said, without contacting. This is what I want to see more of from our defenders in Suncorp Super Netball. If we then play on to the next screen here. This is some great defence right here from Sunshine Coast Lightning. What they're doing is they're keeping the Swifts up court. They don't mind if the Swifts stay up there because they're not going to damage. All the damage gets done down here in the goal third. So they're happy to be able to build the pressure as we play on here. They build the pressure, so they've got to play the ball back and forth, but they get frustrated and end up trying to force a ball through. And who's waiting to get the intercept? No one else but our own Carla Pretorius. <laughs> Bang! She comes through for that intercept. But once again, so clean around the body, gets that tip, tips it to Laura Sherian, and then it goes down for the goal. Looking at the screen, she had six intercepts, seven gains, four deflections and only eight penalties. That's only two per quarter. So this is what I want to see more of. My little pep talk to the defenders in Suncorp Super <laughs> Netball. Be like Carla Pretorius. She's phenomenal, amazing. Do the footwork, get the body control because this woman is amazing. Wow, Shani. You had a lot to bring to the table. Yeah. I loved it. Pumping up the defenders and Carla Pretorius is definitely a standout this season. It's now time to get to my nitty gritty. All thanks to Lexus Berwick. Experience amazing with us. And we've mentioned it a few times, but I want to talk about the physicality. I want to take a look at that game between the Giants and the Firebirds and just some of these incidents that happen. Mm. We say our sport's a non-contact sport. Let's stop saying that now. It is a contact sport. We expect the contact. We see that brutal hit. That was actually mm. an accident against Gretel Tippett there. But the thing that stands out for me is the Firebirds had 91 penalties in That's the entire outrageous. game. That is outrageous, you're right. The Giants only had 59, so the umpires do need to stand up and do something about it. I'm okay with them sending players off the court if that's what needs to happen. I definitely think that could come into it. But 
I think for me... Mm. I agree completely. Yeah. Do you think it's time yes. to send out cautions earlier in the game, set the example, but unless you're actually taking players off the court, no one's going to learn their lesson. Yeah. Um, but I do... Look at these images well, that are coming out of that the, game. We can see the damage that it does. And, you know, I heard Michelle, Michelle Fitbard earlier in the week and she was saying that, you know, they need to be able to have control because these are finely tuned athletes yep. that go so hard at the ball and if they don't keep control... I think that it was so lucky that no players got injured out there, Bianca. Seriously, it's those kind of games where there's bodies everywhere that serious injuries happen. So we were lucky, but we really need the girls to clean up the act. Umpires, send out the cautions early and then send the players off. We'll back you up. Well, we will on Santa Claus anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Nitty gritty was all thanks to Lexus of Berwick. Experience amazing with our unique one-touch purchase. Lexus, uh, LexusofBerwick.com.au. We always finish the show with Coach Says. So, Shani Layton, what are you saying this week if you were a coach? If I was a coach and if I was Bryony Akel, I would stop being so loyal to your girls, which I know is a tough one, Whoa. but if you've got Katrina Rorde on the bench, start her. She's a World Cup winning player. And I know you want to give girls the opportunity that have been in your team longer, but you don't. I know she came on at quarter time, but yep. that could have been the difference between a win and not a win. And also Kayla Cullen, we want to see her out on court. Oh, so, Bryony... I'm watching you. Whoa, OK. Well, if I was a coach this week, what I would do is I'd be on the phone to Amelia Ann Ekinasio. New Zealand, silver, silver fern, she dominated at the World Cup. Mm. And I think teams, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, they're concentrating on finals, but they're concentrating on their team list for next year. I would be very surprised if Amelia Ann's phone is not ringing off the hook at the moment. She is a player I would love to see in Suncorp Super Netball next year. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think yeah, I think too. I'm just trying to think what team she would be most beneficial in. Mm, mm. I don't know. Do you reckon... I'd say I'm in bias. You know, maybe bring her to the Vixens. We need oh. more shooters there. No, we don't. We've no, you it. don't. Bring her to the Magpies. <laughs> All right, Shani, that's been another episode of Centre Court. All thanks to Lapine Funerals, supporting women in sport for over 125 years. Before we finally go, let's take a look at the fixture and the games that are coming up in round 12. The big one for me is the Swiss taking on the Vixens. First yep. taking on third. How's Absolutely. that going to play out? Yeah, I think that the... Oh, I think the Vixens might even pip the Swifts. Depends if Helen Housby ends up coming back in or not. But the other one for me is definitely Magpies versus Fever. Um, Fever getting it over the Magpies earlier in the year, but Magpies are really needing to win if they're wanting to stay in finals contention. Oh, they do. They need a big performance. Can your Magpies girls make that top four? Give me a prediction right now. Can they do it? Oh, I'm going to back them in. Back them in. Well, I'm going to yeah. back the Giants in mm. because... I think they're in better form at the moment. Uh, thanks to Lapine Funerals, thanks to Lexus of Berwick, and thank you to you, Shani oh, Layton. Thank you, Bianca. Enjoy round 12, and we'll be back next week.